Hey, my name is uh, David Forsberg and I'm 20 years old and I live in Pajala. Yeah, I, I grew up here actually, so I, I was living here from when I was born until I was, I was um, 19. Then I moved out from here for like four years, but I came back in uh, 2014 and now I'm uh, a teacher in music. I, I was living in Stockholm and I was thinking like, um, it was too many people. <laughs> it was too many people there. I, I, I felt like I'm, I was lost. I couldn't do anything that I that I wanted to do. I I, I like to play the theater and I like to play some music and uh, uh, I like to do stuff. And in Stockholm, you are one in a million uh, who can do the same things. But in Pajala, it's more it's uh, you're more likely to get get through with your projects and stuff like that. So that's one of the reasons I came back. When I when I come back here, it was um, Paella was uh, in up, uprising. It was with the with the mine and everything. It was like uh, it w it was going to be like a small city. I, I, it felt like back then. Um, so I I the, some of my friends come back here. So I had a lot of friends who who moved from cities to Paella again, and that's also one of the reasons I. I did come back because it was like it's, it seems to be more fun here again. <laughs> I would describe it like it's it's a really great place to grow, grow up in. It's uh, safe and it's um, it's beautiful beautiful nature and it's uh, it's the in the summer we had the midnight sun in the winter we have like this extreme winter and really dark with much snow so it's. Uh, it's like an all year experience, I think, to live here. So, uh, and, and, and I, I meet people I, I know every day. Uh, I never feel alone here like I did in Stockholm. It was, uh, it was me and some friends to me who, who sit, um, we sat actually after, uh, at an after party. <laughs> and one of my friends said, uh, hey, what do you guys think about uh, Torn Down and Pride? Do you, do you, think, do you think, so, think someone will join the parade if we have it in Paella? And all of us just started laughing because that was like this uh, really absurd idea. It's crazy to have a pride in Paella. Uh, but they was talking about this some some more, and I was thinking about why not? Why we can try? What, what what's the worst that can happen? We can try this, and uh, we started a Facebook group. And I lived in Stockholm then, and and some friends here, and some in Luleå. So we uh, uh, started a meeting meeting group in Skype, and uh, started discussing everything uh, th about this. And uh, this was in December two thousand uh, two thousand and. Uh, 13, yes, and 2014, the summer, we had, had our, our festival, Pride Festival. We thought that why not, we, we, there are people that are queer in, in Paella, as, um, as, it is, as it is in Stockholm, Göteborg, Malmö, everywhere there are people that's, that's queer, but in Paella people uh, often move from here because, uh, and with one of the reasons that they are, are uh, HBTQ person, and, uh, and and that's a, a really strange thing. You, you should be able to live in Paella, whoever you are, whoever you love, whoever you, you feel like you are. Uh, so it's, um, and yes, we, we thought it was crazy that you, you felt that, that you cannot live in Paella because of this. So we needed to do something about it. So we started to end on a pride. Uh, it, it, was, uh, it was like this overnight sensation. <laughs> we started our Facebook page one, uh, one night and the morning after we had like 500, between 500,000 people we had, had clicked uh, Gilla on Facebook. And, uh, and some people were starting to be scared. What is this? Is this like some kind of mapping of, of, uh, <coughs> of gay people in, in, in the Tornio Valley? And, um, or, uh, and people like, okay, what, what is this? Are they going? Uh, so, some, somebody wrote on the internet that, uh, oh, <laughs> oh no, the gays are gonna come here and destroy everything. <laughs> like we've never been here before. <laughs> so so it, it was, um, uh, it was, um, Intense, intense feeling. I didn't, I didn't live here back then, so I don't know how the feeling was here. But I heard a lot of, of things that that uh, people are at the at the working places drinking coffee, talking about this, and and uh, and it's like. Um, uh, now they want to make everybody in Paella gay, and now th and uh, and it's strange for men to wear a uh, dress. It, it should be like this and this and this. Why why change something that always been, uh, and and everything like this. So it it was uh, people were afraid that was going to happen with this.
Yeah, I, I, what I heard and what I feel now, it's, it's like there's really this big change. Um, before people, uh, before we had our pride, people asked me, what is this? What are you going to do? What do you want with this? Do you want everybody to be gay? And you start just discussing with them that no, we just want people to understand that there are gay people in Pajala as well, and in, in, in Tornedalen uh, as well. Um, and uh, and after like now, now we will have it for the fourth year. And, and I heard people say that yes, the first year I stand a long, <laughs> long way. I, did, yes, I was interested to see what it is, and I was, uh, would see it in far, from far away. And uh, the second year, they were like standing next to it <laughs> and cheering. Third year, they was thinking maybe I will go with them next year. <laughs> like, so it's, it's like people are walking, uh, uh, yes, uh, literally walking step by step towards, uh, towards us to see what we are. And the first year we had like 800 people in, in our parade. Uh, so it's, uh, it was really, uh, for me it was really overwhelming because I was have been walking the streets before afraid of who I am and afraid what people will say if I know who I am. Uh, but, but now I walk with them together in this uh, really magical parade in, in Payala. Uh, so yes, I, I, I think it, it really changed a lot of uh, people's minds about LGBT people and it, the community. The f first year we had like uh, we had like a really big event. We had uh, a pride house. We had discussions and and uh, uh, lectures and, and things like this. And we have had um, um, a night at the pub. We have like the, this program with uh, artists and everything. And then we had a parade and we had a lot of things. But then it uh, it started to getting smaller because all of we who works with this have uh, our jobs. At, to the side of it, so, so we don't have as much time as we did before. So n n right in the last year we had only the parade and, the, and then the evening at the pub, and, uh, but this year we are trying to get more focus on, on young people who, who are under 18, so we can have some kind of arrangement for, for them as well. Yes, I, I really feel it's more open. When I talk to my students, uh, sometimes it, they are, are still say, using uh, uh, using some bad words, uh, using the, the words uh, as bad words like bög, uh, which is gay in, in Swedish. Uh, and then I t talk to them and ask, why do you use this? Like, like it's something bad. Do you think it's something bad? No, no, I don't think it's something bad. But why do you use it then, like a bad word? Uh, because uh, my brother did before, and but but then it was it was more not okay to be to be gay. But now it is okay. Yeah. So why, so you don't so why do you use it like a bad word? I, I don't know, <laughs> and then walks away. And I never heard his kid uh, use it again, like a bad word. Uh, so yes, ab among children, I, I really feel like it's it's a big change, and also um, uh, among some gro some of the grown ups that been asking me, said, told me that they are really uh, that they have told told me that they changed their mind totally about what, what is pride and what is uh, what is what is it what it is to be an LGBTQ person. I really hope, I really hope we have have a bright future. Right, right now it's a little shaky <laughs> in the politics and everything, uh, but I really hope that um, that more people understand the greatness about living in Payala and uh, and maybe move move here, even they are not connected to to Payala from before. If, for me, it's really important. Uh, for me, growing up with the theater and music, it was really important. Um, to to have to have somewhere to express myself and to have someone to teach me to how how to express myself and, uh, and right now we have we have uh, this great school for this and we have Tornados Theater and and it's uh, Paella is really is really focusing on the culture and that ma that makes me really proud of Paella and that's also one of the reasons I I choose to come back here and that's why I, I really enjoyed living here as as a young boy. I was in Stockholm and I, I was uh, looking about this uh, amateur, te uh, amateur team and uh, I see they were going to, to make a play, I don't remember which one it was, but uh, I was thinking yeah, maybe I can apply there and I was googling it then. And, uh, uh, and they wanted me to pay money <laughs> to to try out for a part in this in this in this place. So I was no. <laughs> in Pajala you never have to do this. Pay money to play amateur theater. No. <laughs> so it was uh, 
yeah, when I lived in Stockholm for like four years, three, four years, I did nothing. I did nothing with the theater, and that was I. I was really longing back for it. Well, I, c I can give a part of my coming out story, <laughs> if you if you would like that. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. When I when I was uh, 13 years old, uh, I uh, started to check out in like this um, magazines for uh, commercials and stuff, and. Uh, uh, I folk and I stayed on a page, and there was this um, male models for underwear, so they <laughs> only wear underwear. And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> okay." <laughs> and I st started to understand that that this cannot be. I cannot be like this because uh, also I, my my family is uh, Christian. I'm, I have a Christian upbringing, so uh, and I knew that this is not okay. This is a sin. Uh, so I I started to. I uh, hate myself because of this. I, I understand that, that I, cannot, I cannot be like this. I have to do something about this. And I start thinking about girls. I just need to, uh, to focus on girls. May maybe I will change if I just focus on girls. And uh, uh, then I come back to, uh, al al always come back to, to looking at men. And, and uh, it was the, the hard part of this was that everybody else in my class, in my school, was like uh, shaking each other out and it was, it was more okay for them to, to actually say what they think about others. Uh, but I could never do that because uh, it was such a big secret for me to... I could, I could never, never, ever, ever tell anyone that I'm, that I'm gay. Uh, so... And I, I started to lie to people and I found, found a girl in a newspaper. And I, yes, I like this one. She's my, I want her to be my girlfriend. <laughs> and it was, it was uh, so hard actually to, to, ne to never be able to express that part of yourself. And I was never, I was a, a weird kid in all other ways. <laughs> in, in the, I, I, because I played the theater and music and I, this is why it was my interests. But as a boy, you should be interested in, in football and ice hockey and, and and hunting and fishing like this, but that was never a part of me. Uh, so I, I was I was strange and everything else, but I could not tell anybody about my sexuality. That was too scary to tell. So I, I moved back. I moved from. So I, I always knew from that day I was 13 years old and saw this magazine that I can never ever ever live in Payala. I need to go from here. The, say, the day I I graduate from school. Uh, so uh, I did. I, I went went uh, to Örnsköldsvik for one year and then Stockholm, uh, and um, but but then I just had to agree to myself that I I, I had to be able to be myself wherever I live. So I moved back to Pajala. Yeah. Uh, actually, my my mother was dead at the moment. She died when I was uh, eighteen, two thousand and seven, um, and. Uh, I actually told my father in, in an argument about love and, and who, who, is, who, who, who can love who and everything like this. So we were standing in the kitchen at home. I was on my way to meet some friends and, uh, I, and I said, but who, uh, how can any lo kind of love be wrong? How can uh, any, any kind uh, of love between two people be something bad? And, uh, and he said that the, and he, he argued that uh, no, no one will be without love. Everybody had the love from God and from the parents and like this. And, and because, because uh, the people are, are made men and, and women to continue the world going on, uh, that's the way it should be. Just because of the, and, and that's what God says it should be like. And, uh, uh, and if you are, and, and those who are gay, you cannot do anything about it. Uh, if you are gay, you are gay, but then you can choose to not live, live it out. You can choose to, uh, to uh, live by yourself. And then I just told him, but, but, but that's not an option for me. I can never, never, ever live by myself without to have a chance of, of uh, love like everybody else. And then I just went out from the house and he went so totally silent. And, uh, um, but uh, uh, then, then we didn't speak about this for a few years. It was like... Um, really silent about, about everything about this and uh, uh, one time in Stockholm me and my friend were, were searching for an apartment and uh, we found one but they wanted a big deposit on, on the house so I called my father and said yes me and my friend here um, Jonas we found this house we want to rent it but they need a security can you be my security yes of course I can be a security okay good and then next time I speak with him he asks me uh, this Jonas what is his uh, sexuality 
It's, it's not like, what is your relation with him? No, it's, <laughs> it's focused on his, uh, rela uh, his sexuality. And I said, you can be calm, he's straight. <laughs> um, and, and then we didn't speak about it for a long time again. But then I, th then I moved back and started pride. Um, it was a bit hard for him. It was uh, hard to think what should the, uh, the family say, all the, all the family relatives say about this. Uh, but then we discussed this very much, and and uh, he said that uh, I I still have my opinions about this, but it's your life. You can do whatever you want. You will always be my son. I will always love you, even even what you do. Uh, and I s told him that yes, and it was it's had it has been hard for me to gr grow up in in a Christianity upbringing because and we never speak about this. If we spoke about this more when I was a kid, I would understand that he would always love me and I will always be his son, even if um, e even if I is, uh, will came out as when I was thirteen. Uh, because uh, back then I thought that he would throw, throw me out the house, but when I uh, was like open to everybody, I, I said to tell told everybody that I'm gay. I had to. I was arranging pride. So uh, then he said that it's okay. Whatever you do, I will always love you because you are my son. So it's uh, everything is okay now.